Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. We all have them. Now let's repurpose them. Stay tuned. What is this craziness going on on my desk? These are all boxes that were delivered to my house over the past two days. One of these boxes, and I believe it was this one, only had a set of marker pens inside. That is all that was in this large box. And that's typical of a lot of the boxes that I will receive and that you will receive. And I'll think, why is this large box on my porch? I only ordered a few pairs of socks. And lo and behold, I'll open this large box to find yet another box. And inside of the box that's inside of the box are some socks. And so I had all of these boxes and I was getting ready to break them down for recycling. And I thought, what a waste. I craft a lot with chipboard, but not everyone has chipboard. But sometimes you want to make something really nice. Well, today I am going to show you something awesome that you're able to make with boxes like this. And here's what I'm talking about. I took one of my boxes and deconstructed it and covered it in some self stick wallpaper and turned it into something very, very useful because now you can take this box and use it as storage anywhere in your home or in your craft space. And if you happen to be in the process of redoing your craft space, you can now take these boxes and get a very well coordinated look for your new craft space without breaking the bank. So this is what we're going to take one of those boxes and turn it into. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, here's a closer look at what used to be an Amazon shipping box. I took it, covered it, and turned it into a beautifully decorated piece of storage for your office or your craft space. And I'm just going to give you the overhead view so that you can see just how gorgeous this is. And y'all, this is so sturdy. So after we go through the process, go ahead and make these and stuff them because they are designed to hold a lot of weight. So what I did on this one is I did two sides to give you an idea of the various ways that we can decorate the front. So I put a handle on this side and then on this side, I put a label holder. So if you wanted to make these without the handle so that you could stack them in the cabinet or sit them out on the desk and label them, then you have that option. So either way, you're going to have a beautiful piece for your craft space or your office. Now the box that I'm using here when finished measures 10 by seven and an eighth, but the box size really doesn't matter because it's the process. All of those Amazon boxes, FedEx boxes, UPS boxes, that we get in the mail are varying sizes. So with the process, you're going to be able to create a whole bunch of different box sizes. So here's what we need. I'll be using my metal snaps. I'll be using some peel and stick wallpaper and then one of the Amazon boxes that was delivered to my home. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to take this box apart and you'll see on the inside, you have the construction tab on the inside of this box. Just very carefully start to remove that. And we're not removing it completely, we're just opening the box. So I am making some noise. All right, so once you get to the bottom and you have your tab open, go ahead and just take your box apart. So what I'm doing is I am cutting through the tape that Amazon placed on this box to hold it together. And I'm going to use my finger blade just to go in and remove that tape. And then what happens is we have a box that's all ready to be put together because now all we have to do is cover it to return it to the shape that it had before we did the deconstruction. But before I do anything, I am just going to go around and clean up the ragged pieces that occurred when I was deconstructing this box. All right, y'all, so all I did was went around the outer perimeter of my box 
and I cleaned up any loose pieces that were hanging over. That's all we need to do. So now I'm going to take my mat and remove it from my desk because I am going to need all of my working space for this part of the project. So what I've done is I've raised my camera and hopefully you're going to be able to get a good view of what it is I'll be doing. So I am going to take my peel and stick wallpaper and I'm going to pull off a piece that is going to be long enough to cover this. And then I'll take my scissors and I'm just going to cut through. And I'm going to peel away the backer from this peel and stick wallpaper. And guys, if you go online and do a search for peel and stick wallpaper, you will literally find tens of thousands of options available to you. So you don't have to settle for the peel and stick wallpaper that I might demonstrate on camera, there are so many other options available. All right, so once I have my wallpaper laid out, I take my box and I'm just going to lay down the center section and get it smooth. And then I'll start laying down the other sections. And I'm not going to be able to have all of this in frame at the same time because it's such a large piece, guys. But I will try to have as much of the process in frame as I can. So now I'm going to bring my mat back in. And what I'm going to start doing, I'll have to do this in sections because it's so large. But I am simply going to go in between each one of these. and cut the wallpaper. Then I'm going to take that wallpaper strip and just fold it up. And we will just keep doing this all the way across this bottom. And don't worry about if it's a little ragged, that will be okay. Let's pull this piece up. So now we have this bottom half done. We are going to go ahead and just take these pieces and fold them up. And then when we get to the end here, we're going to angle and then we can angle here. We can take this piece and fold it up. Then we can move over to the other end. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to angle here and then I'll just angle right here. So we've done this at the bottom. We now need to rotate it and we're going to do the same thing on this end. So I'm just going to go up to that middle, cut straight down, go to this middle, cut straight down, pull this piece up. And now we'll do that here. Go up, drag down, Go up and drag down, take this piece, pull it over, and just lay it on top of that piece. Let's do the same thing over here. And then we'll just place that down. And now we're going to take these pieces and fold them up just like we did on the opposite end. There are many, many ways to cover these boxes. 
and this might not be the way that you want to use. So whatever method you think is going to work for you, go ahead and use that method. So here I am just going to angle so that I can take this piece and fold it up. And then I'm going to go right in here and angle, take that little piece and fold it over. And then I'll angle right there and I'll angle right there. Then I need to rotate it and do the same thing. So I am just going to go into this corner here and drag down, bring that piece and pull it over. And then I can angle here and here. I'll take this piece, pull it up. Go ahead and pull that piece up. And now we can take this piece on our tab and fold it over. So this would ordinarily be the glue flap on any box that we would be making from scratch. This time it's just going to be the connector tab on this particular box. So now on this end, we're simply going to angle here and here, fold this up and fold this over. And so now it's time for me to bring in my big old spatula, go along all of these sections to make sure that I have all of these pieces stuck. And again, I'll use my big old spatula to make sure everything is nice and stuck. And so now I'll take this and when I decide to put it together, I'm going to fold these two tab pieces in first. Those would be my two smaller side tabs on a box I would be making. And then I can take this piece and bring it over and we're going to take what would be the glue flap and just put it right there. And that is how we'll put it together when we're ready to put it together. So now the top and the bottom are the same on this box. So it really doesn't matter which end you want to define as your top or your bottom. But what I am going to do is I am going to add some more peel and stick wallpaper to the wall here so that I can cover this. Now, when I fold these over, it is going to cover a portion. So I really don't need to cut off a piece that is as tall as this because when I do the fold over, I really am only wanting to cover this. And this will save you some wallpaper. So I am just going to put this down and just get a feel for where I need to cut. So all I did was place it in, got an imaginary fold, and now I'm just going to fold this and then I'll cut it. Now this might not be exact, but it will be close enough. So I'm going to take my finger blade and my ruler and just trim. And it's going to take me two pieces to do this. So now I'll take my first piece and I'm just going to place it down right here at the bottom. And you can see how that's going to be when I fold it over. So then I'll take my second piece. I'm just going to butt it up against this piece to kind of get an idea of how much I need to trim. And I'll just take this and I'm going to fold it over right there. And then I'll use my ruler again and I am going to trim away the excess. And now I'll take this piece 
and I'm just going to join it to this piece. And then I can see that I need a little scrap piece right here and by using the same wallpaper inside and out, you don't notice any difference when I lay this piece down because it's just going to blend. So now I'm going to rotate it towards me so that the pieces that I'll be folding over are now on my side. So I am going to take my tape and I'm just going to place tape on these pieces. I have tried glue. The glue does not adhere well to the wallpaper. But if you have something else that you want to try, by all means, give it a try. I'm using tape, so I really can't comment on other things that you might have an idea of trying. All I can say is if you think it might work for you, give it a try. And I'll use my big old spatula to make sure that I have my tape nice and stuck. I have had to raise my camera. That's why the look of what you're seeing looks a little bit different because you are seeing a portion of my floor as well as the leg of my chair. So I'm peeling away my tape, and then I'm just folding this over. And we'll do that final one. So now I'll take my big old spatula and just go over all of that to get it nice and stuck. So now we can stand it up and we're going to start putting it together. So I'm going to bring in these two pieces first and then I'll pull up my final piece, but I'm going to fold what would be that glue flap, but it's a connector flap. I'm simply going to fold it inside so it'll be like this. So once you've got it joined like this and you have what would be the glue tab, on the inside right there. We are going to use our snaps to put this together. So all I'm going to do is take my piercer, pierce myself a nice big hole right there. Now I'm going to take my snap and I'm going to be using the one that is the largest of the set for the top part and then at the bottom, I shouldn't have to use those, but I've got it in and you can see that snap right there. I'm going to place the snap head on. It looks like a little mushroom. And you can hear that snap. Then I'm going to bring in my chunky and this is the way that I do my snaps. If it's not the way that you do yours, that's fine. But this is the way that I am going to be doing this. So I'm going to take my hammer and pound straight down on that snap. And you can see that I have a nice snap closure there. Now I'm going to open this at the bottom. That's why we're not closing it because we really want to be able to get on the inside with our snaps. I'm going to take my paper piercer. I'm going to pierce another hole. And this time I can use the medium size snap because I'm not going through a fold over. So I'll push that medium size snap through. Flip this over, place my snap head on, and unfortunately you guys can't see what I'm doing at this point because the box is starting to close. And I'm just going to pound it into place. And now I have a snap here and a snap here to close it. If you want it, you could actually add a third snap. I'm just going to go with four. So let's go over to the other side. I'm going to take my paper piercer and pierce me a hole and I'll use one of my larger snap prongs and put it through. Now I'll take a snap head and put it on and you're able to see that in there right there. I'm going to take my chunky little hammer 
and just pound that into place. And you can see that this is really starting to take shape. So I am going to open this. I'll try to align these two and I'm eyeballing it from a sitting position. So it's probably not going to be as even as it would if I was standing. I'm going to place that prong right in there. I'm going to take my snap head, put it on, take my chunky, pound it into place. So now we have one side of our beautiful box done. We're going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take my paper piercer, punch a hole, use my large prong head, place my snap, use my chunky, and pound it into place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come over to this side and go ahead and put it down. use our chunky hammer and pound it into place and there we have our two at the top I'm going to go ahead and just punch my holes for the two at the bottom take my two medium size prongs. So in this pack of snaps, you actually get small, medium, and large. So you're able to go through varying thicknesses of material. So now we have our beautiful box ready to be finished. So now I'm just going to stand it up and I'm going to place tape on these two side pieces. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving the look of this. And this one is a different size from the first one that I made because it was a different size shipping box. So I'm going to open this. I'm going to go ahead and peel away my tape. And I'm just going to fold this in and fold that over, stand it up, and I'll press that down. So now we need to take our ruler and figure out just how wide this is. So that side was about 11 and 7 eighths, and this side is about six and three quarters. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a piece of chipboard and I am going to cut it at about six and five eighths by 12 to start. Now I'm using one of my old trimmers that has a very old blade in it, so I'm not ruining a new blade by um, cutting through that chipboard. And all I did was cut the chipboard with that blade to get a score that I can then go back with my finger blade and complete. So now that I have this cut, what I need to do is I'm going to take it to see if I can get it to fit on the inside this way and this way without forcing it in. Now it does fit on the inside 12 inch wise, but it appears to be too wide this way. So I am going to start by removing about an eighth of an inch or a little less than an eighth. And then what I'm going to do is I'll test it again to see if I can get it to go in. And I think that I can 
because once I get past this double thickness here at the top, it seems to be going in well at the bottom. So I am going to take my tape. I am going to place tape on the bottom of this piece. So then I'll peel away my tape. We can take this piece and I'm just going to put it inside of my box by bringing it in and laying it down. And I'll just make sure that I'm going around each end to get it nice and stuck. And you can see that the natural base that I wanted at the bottom of my box looks very good. If you're not comfortable with this being uncovered, go ahead and use some more of your coordinating wrapping paper and cover it. So now I need to deal with the bottom. I am going to cut a piece that is six and seven eighths by 12. So I'll cut this at six and seven eighths using my old trimmer that has a very dull blade on it. Then I'll use my finger blade to go through this piece. And guys, for your project, I really can't give you exact measurements because the box sizes that you'll be working with will be different from the box sizes that I'm working with. But this process will work for you as long as you have some wrapping paper or roll paper or wallpaper that is long enough and wide enough to cover that shipping box. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and place it down. I do know that it's going to be just a little bit shorter than I want but that's okay, I'll be fine with that. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'll use some more of my wallpaper to cover it. So I peeled away the backer. I'm going to take this piece and just place it down. Then I'm going to use my finger blade to just go in and angle on all four sides of this. And then once I have it angled, I'll just take all four sides and fold them over. Pulling them very tight to make sure that I have a good fold over. And then once I use my big old spatula to smooth everything out, we have a very nice base on this. So the way that we're going to do it, I am going to take a few strips of tape and I'm going to take the tape and just place it right here in the middle, just so that I can have some double tape protection. You don't have to use as much tape as I'm using. I just like to make sure that everything is going to stay put together. So then I'm going to take my tape. I am going to get as close to the edge as I possibly can when I'm placing it down. Then I'm going to use my big old spatula to make sure that I have that tape nice and stuck. I use my finger blade to peel away the tape backer. And then I'll peel away the tape backers from this piece. I already know that this end will be just a little short. So 
So I'm just going to take this piece and put it down. Now when I stand it up, you can see that I have a very nice base on this. And so y'all, here is my finished box. The last thing that I'm going to do is make a handle for the front. I will have a link in the description box for those file folder brackets if you are interested in them. I'm not going to add one to this one because I really just want to add a handle and I'm going to show you that handle making process. So I have a piece of white cardstock that is eight and a half by three and I'm going to score this on the three inch side at one and at two and one eighth. And then I'll just take this and I'm going to fold and then I'll burnish. Then I'll use my glue, place glue on that inside, fold over, and then I'll place glue on this piece. And fold over. And then I'll use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck and also to curl my paper. Then I'm going to use my scissors just to trim a little bit to give it a little shape. And so once I have the shape that I want, this part of the process is very easy. I can take my handle and place my handle wherever I want it to be. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold in the ends just a little bit because I don't want my handle to be as wide as it is, but I don't want to trim any off either because I'm lazy. So, I am going to take this, punch a hole, then I can take one of my medium sized snaps, then I'll take my chunky, pound that into place. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to take this, push it in just a little bit, see if I have it straight. And then I'll punch my hole. Take my snap, put that snap on. I have another beautiful storage box. And so now guys, you can see what we're able to do with those fabulous cardboard shipping packages that we get from FedEx, UPS, DHL, anyone that is bringing packages to our home. We can take those boxes and instead of throwing them out, we can now create storage for our homes, the home office, your craft studio, the bathroom, the living room, the kids' playrooms, Anywhere that you need some storage, you probably have some of those boxes being delivered. So go ahead, take them and cover them and repurpose them into what you need for them to be. So guys, I hope that you have liked this detailed process on how to take those shipping boxes and use them for whatever it is you want. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.